Okay. So uh, Constantin will give a brief talk about protecting quantum gates from control noise. Uh, <coughs> Uh, my name is Konstantin Brief. I work in Sandia National Labs, and this work was done in collaboration with uh, Matthew Grace and Kevin Young in Sandia and with a group of Herschel Rabbis in Princeton University. So uh, let me start with some basic notation. Uh, small, uh, so we consider just uh, a controlled uh, quantum gate, which is uh, a basic element of a quantum circuit. And small n is the number of qubits in the gate. Uh, capital N is the Hilbert, sp uh, Hilbert space dimension. W is the target unitary transformation that we want to accomplish. And U of t is the actual evolution operator at the final time. So we want to produce the same evolution uh, upon any initial state, uh, we, and we want this evolution to be as close as possible to the target. So uh, an external control, as, as we're hearing in many experimental talks uh, yesterday and today, if you want to enact some uh, useful uh, operation onto a quantum system, some control is necessary to do so. So CFT is external control, and uh, both Hamiltonian and evolution operators are functionals of the control function. And uh, we measure gate fidelity. Uh, it uh, shows us how, how well the gate was performed. So uh, it's... Uh, it's one minus some normalized distance between the actual evolution and the target. And uh, there are different definitions based on how you measure, uh, how you compute this uh, norm. Uh, one of two uh, conventional definitions uh, using Hilbert-Schmidt norm, you get this, or in some cases uh, it will be absolute value instead of real part. Uh, uh, but uh, in, um, so in work that we are doing, I use this uh, uh, definition. However, uh, all else actually will be the same if this one is used because we work very close to the optimal solution, which means very close to fidelity equal to one. So fidelity itself is also will be the function of control. And uh, let me talk a little bit about uh, the use so-called uh, uh, quantum control landscape. A quantum control landscape is basically def uh, is the functional dependence of your objective. In this case, it's quantum gate fidelity on the uh, control variables. So it can be a continuous control field or some set of control parameters or discretized version in uh, experiment or in numerical study. So uh, formally, uh, there will be critical point on this landscape which satisfies this condition. And of course, we are looking for an optimum. So uh, for we will look actually for the maximum. So we want uh, to point to be, uh, to find a po a point on the landscape which are both critical and also have uh, the, se the second derivative which is a Hessian of fidelity with respect to the control field will be negative semi-definite. So if you want some uh, recent review of all this control theory, this is the reference. And uh, actually, by doing analysis of this quantum control landscape for this particular problem uh, with a given fidelity definition, uh, we can uh, uh, we come with the following results. So, for, uh, if system is controllable, and if we look only at so-called regular critical points, uh, there, will, there will be one maximum manifold where all optimal controls on this manifold will uh, on this manifold are optimal. They produce unity fidelity. 
uh, there will be one minimum manifold with zero fidelity, and uh, all other critical points correspond to so-called saddle manifolds, and uh, if we do optimal control uh, search, those can be easily avoided by a good algorithm. So it's quite easy to get on the top of the landscape and find an optimal solution. So uh, in reality, there will be an infinite number of optimal solutions. You start with a different initial field, you get to different optimal solutions, but in ideal conditions, when there is no noise and no coupling to environment, every of those optimal control uh, solution produces unit fidelity. And uh, actually, in many cases, control coup coupling to control is linear. Mu here is just dipole operator. And uh, in, uh, in the case when uh, true, uh, the Hessian at the maximum can be evaluated and given by this nice expression. So mu of t is uh, just uh, the dipole time-dependent dipole operator in the Heisenberg picture. Uh, and actually, the structure of this Hessian shows us uh, how flat is the top of the control landscape. And the flatness of the top, uh, top of the control landscape uh, uh, it determines how robust uh, is uh, our uh, gate operation to control errors. So uh, now let me uh, introduce uh, noise errors. So in, in reality, when we have control field, it always will be noisy. And uh, we just assume uh, that we work very close to the optimal solution. So what we want to produce is more field C0, but in reality, it will be C0 plus some error. And here, Z of t will be a random variable, and G of t will be some deterministic function, and I use this notation so I can account for two important cases. One is additive noise, so G is just one. Uh, noise is just added to the control field. And second important case is multiplicative noise, where this G function is just proportional to the control field itself. So for example, uh, in control of semiconductor uh, qubits uh, by voltages, uh, it will be usually additive noise with some term additive Johnson noise. Uh, uh, in other cases, when uh, it's microwave field or laser field, which used to control some atom or ion, uh, then uh, noise can be, uh, will be uh, multiplicative. So uh, our approach is based on just taking the fidelity as a function of control field and expanding it into the Taylor series uh, assuming that noise is small. So uh, because we are, uh, work close to the top, at the optimum, so zero order uh, uh, term is just one, and first order term is zero, actually for two reasons. One reason is that uh, first derivative on the top is zero, and also uh, if we consider symmetric noise, actually all, uh, uh, as the expectation values of all uh, uh, odd, odd order contributions will be zero as well. So uh, the leading uh, correction uh, will be, uh, will be uh, of second order term. So it's second order in the control variable and this is the Hessian uh, compute at the optimal control field. So we uh, consider some random noise process. So w the only thing which we know about, uh, basically about this control var variable, we assume it's symmetric and uh, we assume it has some given autocorrelation function. So because it's random variable, in order to estimate the actual fidelity, we need to average over all possible realizations of the noise. So this gives us statistical expectation value of the quantum gate fidelity, which I denote by this notation. Uh, so when we average over all the noise processes, this just gives us autocorrelation function. So in many cases, when you want to simulate system evolution in the presence of noise, you need to do for Monte Carlo simulations, which is numerically very, but because we just do this approximate expansion uh, at the weak noise limit, 
the only thing which uh, contributes from the noise is this autocorrelation function. It, it, and this means that no we don't need to actually simulate noise through Monte Carlo because uh, autocorrelation function is uh, something which we know. And um, so from this expression, we see that uh, our goal is to, so this additional term, it will always be negative because Hessian is negative semi-definite. And we want this uh, absolute value of this term be as small as possible. So that fidelity is as close as possible to one. Uh, and in order to do so, in order to, make, uh, to protect uh, quantum gate from uh, control noise, we want to minimize this overlap. And uh, contribu uh, so the, uh, there is an infer of control fields uh, which are optimal and different optimal fields will have different Hessians. And also for multi in the case of multiplicative noise, uh, those G functions will also be dependent on control. So we can search on the top of the landscape through all possible uh, optimal solutions to, to find those ones which minimize the absolute value of this uh, overlap integral and those optimal solutions will be more robust than the others. So before I'll go to uh, this uh, to my general case, let me consider some important special case, which is white noise. So white noise is basically the worst possible situation because like, for example, we you know dynamical decoupling, for example, cannot work against noise with zero correlation time. It's like this noise is infinitely fast, so you can't do, you can't really control it. But l let's see what happens. So because um, a correlation function for white noise is this delta function, uh, instead of two integrals, for less, we just one integral. However, there is some additional useful property. We see that this hash, uh, this Hessian, it's only diagonal part of, uh, of it. And diagonal elements of the Hessian are actually time independent just because trace of the square of any operator is time independent. And so this trace goes out of the integral and we just left with this uh, expression for expec expected value of fidelity in the presence of white noise in controls. And for additive white noise, this will be, all this integral will be just uh, duration of control. It will be just capital T. And for multiplicative white noise, uh, this integral will be just control energy or as control series like to call it fluent. So we can actually compare how good our approximation is by uh, looking at it uh, uh, against Monte Carlo simulation. So those, uh, once again, uh, for additive uh, white noise, uh, the error in the error in the gate is just proportional to control time, and all these lines are just from this uh, approximate simple approximate formula for different values of uh, noise strengths, and each cir uh, circle here is obtained by uh, sampling Monte Carlo sampling over twenty thousand noise realizations, and you see uh, that uh, our approximation is extremely good, uh, basically up to fidelity of uh, 0.9, or gate error of 0 0.1, uh, which means in the entire area which is of in quantum information processing. And similar thing can be done for uh, multiplicative white noise. Uh, it's the same thing, just uh, we replace the control time by uh, control energy. And once again, uh, agreement between uh, approximate result and Monte Carlo simulation is very good up to uh, 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 in the area of high, relatively high fidelities. So uh, as I said, when we have additive white noise, uh, a gate error is proportional to control time and the only thing which we can do to increase robustness is to minimize control time. And minimizing control time uh, can be done without sacrificing robustness, but only up to a point. There is <clears throat> a critical time below which uh, our gate will be <clears throat> no longer reachable. And we did some exploration of this uh, Pareto front for two objectives. 
to competing objectives. One is maximizing control, uh, maximizing gate fidelity, and se uh, second is minimizing the control time. So this gate, uh, this Pareto front is flat up to critical time. However, this increases very fast. It shows you that it's not very good to operate below the critical time. Uh, there were many different studies of time optimal control. We did some additional work here. Uh, this preprint was just appeared on archive yesterday. So um, you can see that the value of critical time depends on uh, what, uh, what is the target gate. It also depends actually on the global phase of the target gate. And we also studied uh, for two qubit systems how uh, the value of critical time depends, depends on inter-qubit coupling. And uh, it's one over T, uh, uh, sorry, one over J, where J is inter-qubit coupling for uh, low couplings. However, this behavior is different uh, for uh, higher coupling strengths. Uh, uh, come, uh, so going back to uh, the case of multiplicative uh, white noise, uh, the gate error is proportional to control energy. So if you want to minimize control energy, the different story is minimizing control time. So uh, this plot shows you uh, op uh, the uh, energy affluence of the optimal control field versus uh, the same property of initial field from which we start optimization. And you see that if you want to achieve a, a small energy in the optimal field, you need to start with a small energy in initial field. And then uh, optimiza optimization search will take you to optimal field with relatively uh, low, uh, uh, with as, as small fluence as needed to actually achieve the achieve the target operation. Uh, those different lines obtained for different uh, final times. And you see that generally as uh, time increases, actually the optimal fidelity goes down. However, this change is not uh, monotonic. So this is uh, final time equal one. Uh, and uh, uh, actually, fi this is final time equal three it's below than four and six. So this change is not monotonic. And if you look at the dependence of f optimal fluids on control time, it oscillates. So, uh, so it has an envelope which decreases as one over T, and this is generic for all uh, target uh, gates. However, those oscillations uh, have, amplitude of oscillations is constant for Hadamard gate and Z gate, and uh, decay, uh, amplitude of oscillations decay exponentially for egg power X and Y gate. Uh, so let me just say a few words uh, for general case when it's a colored noise, not white noise. We want to minimize uh, this, uh, no, uh, this uh, robustness metric. And uh, I would say the only thing that we can also represent this robustness matrix in, in the f frequency domain by using Fourier transform. So S of Z is uh, autocorrelation function, which is Fourier transform, uh, so, sorry, it's power spectral density of noise, which is Fourier transform of autocorrelation function. And we, we see that in the domain, if, uh, if it's white noise, this will be constant. So uh, there is no much you can do about uh, changing this uh, Fourier transform of the Hessian. However, if there is a peak, in uh, the power spectrum with a white noise, you want the peak of the Hessian to be as far separated as possible from the peak of the noise. So you want them to be spectrally separated from each other to increase robustness. And finally, I can say that we use some uh, genetic uh, algorithm to uh, m uh, minimize this uh, uh, um, robustness matter K. So this line is obtained when we just um, uh, you sp parameterize the control field with one frequency and improvement is by factor of two. However, when we uh, make a control field more flexible and parameterize it by four